All right, well, good morning, uh, grade seven. We are getting now into chapter five, and our focus today is gonna be on ratios and proportions and doing that sort of thing. And today our focus is going to be on ratio tables. And we have three ratio tables that we're gonna look at in this video. And it says, <clears throat> excuse me, find the missing values in the ratio table, then write the equivalent ratio. So when I have a ratio table, I have two values. I have cups and quarts. So cups and quarts, let's say you might be doing something with a recipe or something along those lines. And it might say, well, for every three cups, you need three fourths of a quart. Okay. And so our goal is now to fill in the missing values. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the calculator because you might be able to plug some things in to a calculator so my my apologies for that little delay there but if i look here at cups and quarts okay and i the way i there's different things that i can do okay i can talk about how what i did to the cups to get that number of quarts i can think about what i did to the three cups to get 12 cups and so we're going to look at it a couple different ways. So for this one here, we're going to tell ourselves, okay, what did I do to the three to get 12? Because if I know that my, uh, if I know that my multiplication tables, I multiplied the three by four to get 12, which means I need to do three fourths times four. So I come over here to my calculator. I take three over four. I multiply that by four. That equals three, okay? So I know that for 12 cups, I need three quarts. All right, so now I see, okay, what did I do? I can go back and I could look, oh, well, what did I do to 12 to get 15? That doesn't work as well. But I can go again back to looking at what did I do to three to get 15? Well, I did three times five, which means that I would have to do three fourths times five. So I can come over here. All right, got some not great lighting there. So I'm gonna go three over four times Five. that equals three and three-fourths. So that means when I have 15 cups, I need three and three-fourths quarts. And there it is, you see the three and three-fourths. All right, well now I see, okay, um, now I know the five-fourths quarts, and I need to figure out how many cups. Well, it's not as easy to figure out what did I do to three-fourths to get three? What did I do to three and three-fourths to get 15? But I can see here that when I have three quarts, <clears throat> I have 12 cups. And I know that three times four make 12. Well, I need to have the same pattern. So that tells me that three-fourths times four is three. Three and three-fourths times four is 15. But I've got to do five-fourths times four. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to be... 5 over 4, okay, times, and it just turned that to 1 and 1 fourth, the 5 over 4, because 4 can go into 5 one time, there's 1 left over, the denominator would still be 4. That's why it automatically turns that into 1 and 1 fourth. So then I say that times 4, and that's going to equal 5, which means... I put a five there, all right? Let's look at other examples. All right, kilometers, five over two, hours, four. When I look at this, once again, I can see, well, four hours became 16 hours. <clears throat> so I can very clearly see there that I multiplied by four, which means I have to do five over two times four to get that number there. I have to be consistent. So I come over here to my calculator. I clear it out. Five over 
two times, and it made that two and a half. Five divided by two is two. There's one left over. My denominator is two. Five over two times four. That equals 10. So I know that in 16 hours, I've gone 10 kilometers. All right, well now I'm seeing, okay, what did I do? It's not as easy to figure out five over two and 10, but I can see what I did to 10 to get five. And I see that I did 10 divided by two. Well, 10 divided by two is five, all right? So I know that I'm gonna do 16 divided by two to get this number here. Well, I know that 16 divided by two is eight. So I fill in that missing number with eight. All right, last one, because we just like to get a th three examples. Now with decimals, it's not as easy to make it, to see how it works. I have gallons, 0 0.4, and days, 0 0.75. So I can ask myself, okay, what did I do to 0.4 to get 1.2? Well, decimals aren't as easy to work with. So if I don't know the multiplication problem right off, I can do the reverse and do a division problem, which means I'm gonna punch into my calculator 1.2 divided by 0.4. So I'm gonna come over here, 1.2 divided by, and let's focus in here a little bit divided by 0.4, and equals, that equals three, which means I did 0.4 times three to get 1.2, which means I need to do 0.75 times three. All right, we can handle that. Let's come over to our calculator, let's clear it. 0.75 times three, equals 2.25. So we come over here, 2.25, all right? Well, now I'm saying, okay, what did I do to 0.4? Or I can think, what did I do to 1.2 to get 1.6? So I'm gonna use the, go ahead and use the 0 0.4 to keep consistent with what we've been doing. And I'm gonna go ahead, and once again, I'm gonna type in 1.6 divided by 0.4. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna clear it. 1.6 divided by 0.4 equals, well that equals four, all right? So I can see that I multiplied by four, 0.4 times four, sure enough is 1.6, which means here I need to multiply by 0.4. So I'm gonna come back to my calculator and type in 75 hundredths, 0.75 times four, and that's going to equal three, which means that in three days, I used 1.6 gallons. And that fills it up. That's ratio tables for you, seventh grade lesson 5.1. Talk to you later, bye.